Okay, folks, this is Cecil Pearson Jr., and I've already done the video just now of what I could remember about heaven. Now, this video is going to be about <clears throat> from when the angels grabbed me after God said, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> after God said, uh, <clears throat> depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I've never known you. Now, when he said those words to me, it was, it was worse than when the doctors told me that my wife had died. It really was. It was the worst sound I had ever heard in my life. And then these two angels just picked me up and flew me across this very, very dark divide that's between heaven and hell and you can see hell from heaven and you can see heaven from hell and they just turned me loose and I seemed to have fallen for me it seemed like forever but when I hit there was this bone crushing pain that shot through me I mean imagine if you will falling from a great height and landing with no parachute or no soft cushions or anything like that. You just land on something that hurts real bad. Now, what I landed on was other people. And these people, they bite, they claw, they scratch. I've already told this story, but, but they do. This is part of what hell is like. They bite, they claw, they scratch, they chew. They're trying to get from the underneath who's on top of them, they're trying to get on top where people will stop biting and chewing and clawing on them. Because it's just people piled on top of people, piled on top of people, piled on top of people. And the walls of hell are constantly moving. They're constantly expanding to make room for more people. And hell was not designed for people. That's what that's what everybody keeps forgetting is hell wasn't designed to punish people. Hell was designed for Satan and the angels that fell with him. That's what hell was designed for. It wasn't designed for people. But because people rejected God and rejected Christ, that's where they had to go. They had to go somewhere when they died. They couldn't go into heaven. They couldn't go into paradise. So they had to go into hell. That's the only place you put them. You can't leave a bunch of dead folks roaming around the planet. So God had to put them somewhere. Now, let's talk about the smell first. I talked about the smell of heaven, so let's talk about the smell of hell. Y'all ever been riding down the road <clears throat> and ride by something that's been dead for quite a few days and that smell just fill up your car? Magnify that by about 50 million. It smells so bad that you think maggots should be crawling everywhere, but they ain't none. It's so dark, there's no light, but yet you can see. Now, people draw pictures of the fires of hell. You can't see the fires of hell because the fire is so hot that it's transparent. So you can't see the fires of hell, but you can sure feel the heat. Because it feels like that the skin is going to bubble up and the meat is going to melt and run off your bones. But when you look down at your hand and at your arm, and it looks just like it did when you were on earth. That way, see, you can be tormented forever. You can burn and have that experience, that pain, forever. Because if the flesh burned off of your bones, your pain would be over. But it can't be. Oh, no. It can't be. You've got to suffer forever. Well, this heat is so intense that it's burning. You feel like you, uh, the, the meat and hide and everything's melting off the bones. and You feel like your bones are being broke and crushed by the, the pressure of everything around you. And you're constantly sinking. So you start digging and clawing, trying to stay on top. and uh, Then all at once... Every single time that you were offered the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Savior and to live for God, 
That starts playing like a bad home movie in front of your face. You can see it. And then you can look up at heaven and you can see heaven knowing that if you had just said yes at any time when the Holy Spirit was drawing you, that's where you'd be and you wouldn't be where you are. That is another torture. There's so many levels of torture in hell that it ain't even funny. There's the smell, there's the biting, there's the chewing, there's the clawing, there's the scratching, there's the fire, there's <clears throat> the, you should have accepted Jesus playing in your head. There's being able to see heaven and know that you'll never be able to get to it. You'll never be able to escape what you're in right now. Well, I made my way over to the wall. And folks, let me tell you, every single wall is nasty, it's dirty, it's rocky, it's spiny. It's, it's like trying to climb up on something that's full of barnacles. It cuts you, it grabs at you. It's almost like the walls are alive. But I managed to get up on this wall. But it didn't do me any good because every single wall of hell is guarded by huge, like 35 to 40 foot demon plus. And every one of them's got a whip. And when they hit you with that whip to knock you off that wall, it is like being cut in half. The pain is so bad. Now folks, I've got a spot on my back. I've been to dermatologists, several of them, and they have sampled the skin and sent it off, and they can't figure out why that spot is always there and why it always itches. It never goes away, and there's they don't know what it is. They can't find what it is. They've tested the skin and don't know what it is. It's not psoriasis. It's not a... Uh, what's a eczema and nothing like that. It's just, I tell you what it is, it's hell. It's a spot on my back that reminds me constantly of where that demon's whip hit me. And it itches so bad when it gets hot like it is now in the summertime here in South Georgia. Man, that thing terrifies me. But you know what? It ain't as bad as the horror and the terror I felt in hell, and it does serve as a constant reminder to me of what I'm trying to avoid. But nonetheless, I digress. Let's continue. These demons are so ugly. They are everything that you could possibly imagine and worse. They've got big teeth, they've got big claws, they're all leathered up and just nasty looking. And it's almost like they've got goat style feet, but with big claws on them. And goat style hands, but with big claws on them. And boy, can they work that whip, because I mean to tell you, <clears throat> it don't take but one crack of that whip and you're off that wall and you're back in that torture. And as far as you can see to the left, and as far as you can see to the right, unless you get dropped in close to the edge where I did, is nothing but faces sticking up, clawing, scratching, trying to get out. Now, folks, don't ask me if I recognized anybody there, because I'll be perfectly honest with you. I was hurting so bad and in so much pain, I wouldn't have realized if my own mama had been standing there biting on my arm. I wouldn't have known her. It's that bad. As good as heaven is, hell is worse. But off to the distance to my left from where I was in hell, there's a throne. And sitting on this throne is the most beautiful angel you'll ever see. He's sitting there and he's just watching. He's not saying a word, he's not laughing, he's not cackling, he's not doing anything. He's just sitting there looking. Almost looks like he's planning, but he's just sitting there. And he is so beautiful, so beautiful, 
This angel is Lucifer, none other than Satan. See, folks forget that Satan is Lucifer, a fallen angel. And he was God's most trusted and most beautiful angel. He was the best of the best. And he tried to overthrow God and he got thrown out. So yes, yes, Lucifer is there. And you can call him Satan, you can call him Beelzebub, you can call him whatever you want. But to me, looking at him, he was Lucifer. Because he was so beautiful. But underneath all that beauty that was sitting there, you could feel the hate emanate from him. Just radiating. It was like it, it was another form of torture, if you will. It was like as much love as you could feel in heaven, that much hate you could feel in hell. It was just, it was just like it just pierced every fiber of your body. And it was at that moment that I heard Jesus begging God, please let me go get him. I know he'll change. I know he'll tell people. I know he'll do what's right. Please, Father, let me go get him. And in an instant, there were so many screams in hell. And Lucifer had this look on his face like, what are you doing here? This is my house. And Jesus come in there like a boss, buddy. I mean like a boss. Everything ran from him. Even Lucifer, Satan, backed up. And Jesus took my hand just before I went under these crowd, this bunch of people. And he lifted me out of hell. And he carried me back. And as we walked back down this staircase, it was a little different. I was able to see around me and see the rooms and the hospitals that I was passing through as I went down back into the operating room. And when we got there, I could see my father. He was standing there, had his pocket knife out, and he told that doctor, he says, I swear, doc, if my boy dies, so do you. And Jesus picked me up, and he put me back in my body, and he kissed me on my cheek. And he said the only words that he said to me, and that was, now go, do our Father's work. Go. And he was gone. And three days later, I woke up in an intensive care unit with a huge bandage on my head. And the first thing I'd done was ask for a minister. And like I told you guys, I went through a Catholic priest, a Pentecostal minister, before I got to my Grandma Ruth. And my Grandma Ruth led me to Jesus that day. I meant I wasn't going another hour, not another minute, without being saved because I never wanted to go back to hell. So folks asked me what I did when I got back. I went to church. And I tried to give my testimony. And a preacher had two deacons pick me up and throw me out of the church. Literally throw me over the steps out into the gravel parking lot of the church. This Pentecostal church. And I looked back over my shoulders at that church. And right above the door I could see being written in red the word Ichabod. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but if you go look it up in uh, Hebrew terms, it means God has departed. It wasn't long after that, that church burned down. And I decided that I wouldn't go to a church from around here where I live and try to give my testimony because people would throw me out or they would make fun of me or they would laugh at me. And it took a long time for me to finally get to the point to where I can do what I'm doing right now, and that's be able to sit down, record it, or go to your church or your... I don't care where I have to go to now. Throw me out if you want to. Jesus was thrown out of worse. So you know what? I can handle it. 
but you people need to know there's very real consequences for your decisions, your decisions. It's not God's will that you go to hell. It's, your, it's His will that you get into heaven. It's what you do with your life here that makes the difference. Do you follow the rules and do what God says and accept Jesus as your Savior? Or do you burn in hell forever? Folks, those are your choices. There is no in-between. There is no middle ground. You're either for God or you're against God. And that's the video about hell. God bless. I love y'all, but not as much as God.